let's make it. For this project, the only thing you'll need is the Nextian screen itself. To power it, I'm just going to be using the adapter that came with it, a micro SD card, and a micro USB cable to power the adapter. Since this form of brightness control is strictly going to be using a slider on the screen, you won't even need an Arduino to control the brightness of the screen. But if you wanted to use something like a light sensor, then obviously you would need the Arduino. So here's a project I was working on, and the slider I made looks like this. It's got the thing in the center, the slider itself, and I put these three lines on it, and it's a rounded rectangle, and we see the background of it is darker on this side and lighter, indicating that it gets brighter as you move the slider. So I'll show you how to make something like this. So here we are in GIMP, and I'll go to File and make a new project. I'm gonna put my screen in the vertical orientation, so it is 320 wide by 480 pixels tall for the 3.5 inch version of the screen. Hit OK. We'll come over to the rectangular selection tool and we can just click and drag anywhere for now because we'll define the exact position of the four corners. So for the position from the X direction, I'm going to put a border of three pixels on there. So we'll make that three pixels away. And from the top, it doesn't really matter, I'll just set it to 60 for now because we want some room to work with. Because if you see here, the slider itself actually goes above the background area here. And for the size in the X direction, since it's 320 pixels wide and we want to leave a 3 pixel gap on each side, we'll make it 314 pixels wide. And how tall we want it, I'll put it to 40 pixels. Now we'll come up to select, choose rounded rectangle, and I like to leave the radius at 50%. I think it looks pretty good like this. And then for the background, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select a yellowish white color to represent brightness. Hit okay, and I'm actually going to flip these two colors because when I drag the gradient tool from left to right, it's gonna put the primary color on the left and the secondary color on the right. So I'll go ahead and click the gradient tool and I'll start slightly inside and drag all the way completely off the screen. The farther I go, the more the primary color is going to transition over to the other side. And once I've got it where I want it, I'll just let go and hit enter. Now to make the border, we can come up to select and click border and set the pixel size as three, hit okay. And here we have the border. Now I am going to also put a gradient on the border itself too. So I'm going to choose a dark gray for here and the secondary color I'll choose a lighter one and this time I'll drag diagonally across because I think it looks a little cooler and release the mouse hit enter and then to deselect all I'll hold control shift and a that's it for the background so you'll want to go ahead and go to file and export your picture over here in the next in editor we'll go ahead and create a new project I have the enhanced 3.5 version and I'll come over to display and make sure the vertical orientation is selected and hit OK. Here we have our workspace. Then you'll just come over here to picture and add the background picture. Okay, now it's imported over here and we can make sure that our page is selected by clicking on it. Then we'll come over here to the attributes, change the solid color to image and change the image to the background image. And now here we have the slider and we'll actually place the slider object over here from the toolbox. I'll click and choose slider and we're just gonna drag it. You can either click and drag to resize this or you can define it with numbers. I know that our width is going to be the whole width of the screen so I can set that to 320. So what we have to do is actually widen it manually by just making the green area bigger than the area of this background that we want. Then when we come over to solid color, change this crop image 
and choose the picture as the background, you can see there's extra space over here. So if we scroll down to the attributes, we can see the height is now 67. I'm actually just gonna change this to 66. Now it looks a little bit more even. So that means we can now set the module or the node in the middle to a height of up to 66. So I'm gonna set the slider to a height of 60 and we'll make the width 35. I think that looks pretty nice. So you could just leave it as a solid color, but I think we should make a custom slider. So we'll go over to GIMP, we'll go to File, New, make it 35 wide and 60 tall. And I'll set the background as black by choosing a black color, going to the fill tool and clicking once on the background. Then I'll take the rectangular select tool and I'm going to select the entire canvas here. And now I'll come up to select, go to rounded rectangle. I'm actually gonna turn the radius up a little bit more to the, for this one, make it a little bit more rounded, go to 60. And now I like to make a gradient on here. So I'll come over, I'll choose the two colors that I want. I'll make one of the colors black and I'll make the other color a dark gray. And I'm gonna come over to the right side here and change the shape of the gradient to radial. That way what we can do now is we can click in the center and drag outwards. And as you can see, it's making a circular gradient. I think that adds a little bit of depth to it, so I'll just release the mouse, hit enter, and now we have the slider itself. I'm also going to add three rectangular or rounded rectangular grooves in here. I think the red color looks pretty nice, but you can adjust the colors to whatever fits your project. So I'll come over to the rectangular select tool, and I'm actually going to use these jagged edges as reference of where I'm going to start. And I'll make it parallel with that one, and that's three pixels wide. So I'm just gonna scroll down, so I'll just make it parallel with that. Now if I scroll out, you can see it's symmetric. Now I'm actually gonna put a gradient inside this too. So what I'll do is I'll leave the background as black, and I'll change it to a dark red. I think that'll look pretty cool. Come over to the gradient tool, but I'll change the shape back to linear. And I'll go at a diagonal again, because I think that looks kind of cool. And I'll just hit enter. And then I'll just do the same thing, make two more of these. All right, so here we have it. It's looking pretty stucy with those gradients. So now I'll just go ahead and export that. Back in the next gen editor, you'll want to go ahead and import that picture just like you did with the background. We'll make sure the slider is selected. And we'll come over to PSTA, which is this object right here. We'll make sure that's on image and pick two is the picture for that one. So we'll go ahead and select the slider that we created and okay. And there it is. So now if we come up to debug, you can play around with. So now to make it control the brightness of the screen, we'll select the slider itself. And I like to come over to touch move. And what this is gonna do is if you move the slider, then it executes this code. So the code to dim the screen is just dims equals and then some number, some percentage between zero and 100. But since we wanna make it controlled by the slider, the slider object name happens to be H0. So what I'm gonna say is H0.val. So now whatever the slider position is set to, that's what it sets the brightness to. Make sure you don't put any spaces here. This program doesn't like if you have any spaces and it'll give you an error. So if you were to put this on your next gen display, you'd notice that when you slide it all the way to zero, your screen brightness will go all the way down to zero. And then if you let go, and if you don't remember where this position was, the screen's completely off. You can't see anything. So we'll make some code to make sure that it doesn't let it go below zero or below one actually. So I'll just create an if statement and I'll say if and the object name is h0.val is greater than zero. And there's equivalent ways to say this. You could also say greater than or equal to one. That would achieve the same result. Then we'll use our French curly braces to open and close the if statement. And then we can just cut this 
and put it inside the if statement. So now we've got it uploaded to the screen and as you can see, if I drag the slider, it gets brighter and dimmer, but does not go all the way down to 0% brightness. If you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.